Hey folks, this is Jim. I put together this video to, to basically show an analysis that I did on a hot water circulation pump that I have installed in my house. If you're thinking about installing a hot water circulation pump or you already have one and you're curious about how much uh, additional energy, electricity and gas are being used by having that in your house, then uh, this is basically my cost breakdown of it and the analysis that I did. So, um, before we, uh, before I dive into the details, just to go over what a hot water circulation pump does, uh, the cylinder at the bottom of my diagram here is basically your hot water heater. Um, you see the hot water line that's running out to, typically you'll do this at the furthest point in your house. In my case, it's the kitchen, where at that point in time, you create a loop where a return line uh, basically comes back down to the hot water heater and you put a circulation pump basically in that loop. Uh, and what this is doing is it's um, hot water as it's starting to cool down, you know, at the kitchen gets returned back uh, to the hot water heater. So the pump is basically continuously at a very low but steady pace circulating the water so that as water, as the water cools down, it gets returned to the hot water heater and it gets replaced by hot water coming from the hot water heater. So that's essentially what it does. And the benefits of this are, you don't have to wait, um, you know, in the case of my house, 30, 45, 60 seconds for hot water to come up if I don't have this pump on. Uh, the other benefit you have, obviously, of having water circulation pump is that you don't waste water. If you're sitting there running cold water, you know, running hot water and it's not hot, you're basically wasting a bunch of water waiting for it to heat up. So I already covered the benefits here of having a hot water circulation pump. It's water savings and then it's time, you know, you'll save 30 to 60 seconds whenever you need hot water. The negatives on the other hand are you've got a pump running continuously. It's very low horsepower, uh, but it's still taking energy to run. And the second negative is that all this water that you're continuously pumping through the piping going out to the furthest point of your house and then coming back, it's all losing heat. Uh, there's a lot of surface area, you know, when you look at half an inch piping, if that's what you have, going to the furthest end of your house. And even if you have insulation, like I have insulation on those pipes, it's still losing an awful lot of heat. So when it gets back to the hot water heater, it triggers the hot water heater and it's it's running a lot more continuously than it otherwise would be when this pump is off. So jumping into the cost analysis of what it costs when I have this uh, basically circulation pump on, the electric's pretty easy to calculate. It's just Ohm's law. Uh, my pump is a 0.22 amp pump uh, running at 115 volts. That's 25 watts uh, continuously, 24 by 7. So if you calculate that across a month, uh, you end up with 18 kilowatt hours being used across a 30-day month. I live in uh, PG&E territory in California where energy rates are very high. So on average throughout the year, I pay about 26 cents uh, in the top tiers where this energy would be coming from. Uh, and that equals about $4.68 uh, uh, per month uh, in cost for me. So uh, a little bit less than $5 is the cost of the electricity. Now moving to the gas, and this surprised me quite a bit. I was surprised at how big the impact of the gas would be. So I, what I did is in 2016, I had this pump on. Uh, in 2017, I turned it off. Now, I chose to compare September through November because I had the same number of people living in the house. The heating system is not on at that particular point in time. Most of the gas is being used either for the dryer, the range, or... Um, or the hot water heater. Now, in this case, the usage in the house was, you know, very similar from year over year. So I think the analysis is pretty well apples to apples if you look at this. So in 2016, if you look at the red line on the chart, uh, the reason why the chart is so choppy, by the way, is because the utility companies bill in, in terms. It's either one or two or zero or three or four in the winter. Um, so in this case, if you look at it every single day throughout 2016 with this pump on, I was either one or two therms views per day. On average, it was 1.55 therms per day. In 2017, with the pump off, it was either zero therms or one therm every single day, on average 0.52 therms. So the difference between this across two months or 61 days uh, was basically uh, $120, uh, 31.5 therms per month. Uh, so approximately $60 per month with the amount that I pay uh, for gas. Now, you may pay a little bit less than this. A lot of utilities are charging a buck 20, buck 30, buck 40 for a therm of gas. In my case, uh, with the circulation pump on, not only am I paying that, but I'm also being bumped up into a higher, uh, basically a higher 
uh, energy use where I'm getting a surcharge for using too much gas. So, uh, so anyway, the cost of the gas per month was $60, which I thought was much higher than I expected it to be. So in summary, you've got $5 of electric, 60 bucks worth of gas, natural gas being used by having the circulation pump on. Um, over a course of a year, that's $800. Now for me, the convenience of not having to wait 30, 40, 60 seconds for hot water is not worth uh, spending $800 per year. So for me, this is a no brainer. The pump's gonna be off in my house moving forward. Um, a couple points on this. Now the water bills are high in California, but there's no way, uh, basically, even if I save a couple of gallons of water every time I want hot water, there's no way the cost of that is gonna offset even the electricity cost of $5 a month, much less the very, very much higher, uh, you know, natural gas costs that I'm talking about. Um, you know, your trade-offs on this are gonna vary. Uh, the, you may have cheaper utilities, which will bring the cost of having this pump on down to a certain degree. Uh, it's still going to be probably significant. Um, you know, and the other thing to keep in mind here is the amount of gas wasted is going to vary depending upon other factors. The size of your house, meaning how big that loop is in which the water is cooling down uh, before it gets recirculated back into the hot water heater. The temperature where the water lines are routed, in my case, I've got them in the sub area in my house throughout this time of the year, it's probably well, on average 70 degrees down there. And then finally, if you have insulated uh, hot water lines, I do in my case, uh, both the line going out as well as the line coming back. Uh, so uh, anyway, I hope this helps if you guys are making a decision or you are curious about what the impact of this is. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to, to you know, uh, lend my uh, analysis and my, you know, share what I've learned here. Um, anyway, thank you.